chose case uh, because of the prestige in engineering. Uh, but I was also a competitive swimmer and case allowed me to do both. Be able to combine my studies together and uh, also pursue uh, the swimming that I wanted to do and be able to uh, uh, try to work to excel at both and be able to combine both and uh, w what a luxury truly that I had at Case. I had the uh, opportunity to make incredible good friends uh, at Case and uh, some of them were on the academic side and some of them were on the swimming side. Uh, I enjoyed going to conference and to uh, nationals with uh, Case and having the uh, uh, ability to represent the uh, school in a number of different uh, meets and, and uh, forums. Uh, we also had the opportunity at one point in time with some of my friends to organize a trip to Peru that was uh, wonderful for uh, all of us. And so many uh, unexpected things happened in that trip, with great memories. Uh, I am very grateful to uh, the Case Alumna uh, Association for the scholarship that I received which partially funded my studies when I was at the case. Um, that's uh, something that I think um, uh, gave me a lot of confidence um, uh, in terms of having somebody believe on what I was achieving and was able to help and um, reward me for uh, the uh, academic achievement. Uh, to this day, I'm extremely grateful and uh, it's um, uh, uh, part of why I'm here today. All of us are part of the, are a sum of all of our experiences. And I think in particular for me, Case is a pillar of who I am. Uh, uh, going through undergraduate degree and being able to um, think about uh, solving problems and structured thinking, um, it's, it's wonderful uh, to see that foundation in the work that I still do today, maybe in a different line of work. Uh, I today lead our global diabetes business at uh, Lilly and I have the opportunity to uh, truly uh, advance medicine and uh, be able to, uh, our mission is to improve the outcomes of people with diabetes. I am so grateful to my family in particular as um, I pursued my career we had so many moves. Uh, whether it was in Brazil uh, or Mexico or even Peru and back to the USA in different cities. Uh, it's uh, support that I have always received. Uh, quite frankly, what I have achieved truly has been teamwork uh, from my entire family and in particular uh, uh, because of all of the support and love of my wife Kathleen. Receiving the Meritorious Award is truly special and I think it places a special responsibility on uh, every one of us that is receiving this award. Um, so it is an opportunity to become more engaged and to give back and to truly represent the school in the best possible way in all of our endeavors. Well, I'm half Italian, even with a name like Culver, and uh, the family on the Italian side uh, came to this country relatively recently, in, at least in, in generational terms. And the family goes back with some interest to at least my great-grandfather, uh, who was allied with Garibaldi, who was the warrior statesman who was largely responsible for bringing the city-states of Italy into a single country. So they came to the United States in the early uh, 1900s, around 1910 or thereabouts. In his discussions with me and with everyone else in the family, that this was the kind of a country where given education, you could do anything. You, Walter, have become president of the United States. You can't do that in Italy for political reasons. And that was very important to me. And so education became a very important part of my uh, growing up. And Case came through and said, we've got this extra fellowship, sort of, 
And if you want it, we'll pick it up off the floor and you can, you can take it. And all you have to do is agree verbally to go straight through for a PhD and not stop and, and take time off. Which, which I agreed to do. What was then the startup of the Systems Research Center, multidisciplinary. Uh, I was assigned nominally to the EE department, electrical engineering department, but I could take courses anywhere. And my uh, professor, who was my advisor, was uh, Mihailo Mazarovich, who is still a professor emeritus here at the university. And uh, Mike, uh, allowed me to take pretty much whatever made sense if it added to my overall breadth of understanding of the universe. And he approached me and suggested that my family fund and endow uh, a graduate fellowship in the area of energy. And I spoke to my wife and we should, said, sure, that's part of the giving back process we had talked about earlier. And we funded uh, an engineering, engineering fellowship for sustainability. Uh, that was actually the first money that came into what became the Great Lakes Energy Institute. That was probably used in the marketing with the Cleveland Foundation and the Maltz family for really big money. And so that got the whole process started. And when they hired, uh, when Case West Reserve hired an executive director, uh, Diane Anderson, uh, she approached me with the senior faculty uh, member who was responsible for the faculty side of the Institute, uh, Professor Ewan Alexander, and asked me to form a board, essentially form it from scratch, help select some of the members, uh, set up the policies and procedures and get it started. But I think more important, it shows that the giving back process has some psychic rewards associated with it. And uh, the giving back process uh, involves uh, you know, a lot of time I put in uh, that the university recognized and it, it, I think it's good for all parties. I'm the type of golfer who looks at the mechanics and the theory of it. I'm not an intuitive golfer so when I make a mistake on the golf course I think about it and I say well I should be on my toes more than my heel when I finish my swing and that becomes a challenge that I, I deal with uh, every time I go out. I try to play a couple of times a week. Uh, the other things I do I still try to play some basketball against my grandson, my oldest grandson's 21. Uh, the only thing that makes me a little taken aback is the last time I played him, we played one-on-one, -on -one, five games, he beat me three out of five. And that sort of takes me down a notch. very committed to the Case Connection Zone, which is the nation's first gigabit fiber to the home community, um, and the vision of Lev Gonick, Case's uh, incredible CIO. Um, I also work with Jim Kostler at the Youngstown Business Incubator, giving my time to help startups as a way of giving back, and I have my own startup called Visualized Energy. The Case Connection Zone itself is focused on giving anecdotal proof of the value propositions of the National Broadband Plan in four national priority areas in the home. And those are home health and wellness, home energy management, public safety, and STEM education in the home at the high school level. Great. I went out of school immediately in the Chi Corp and did some very large projects um, ranging from what was then the first database management system for UNIVAC to, um, if you haven't heard of UNIVAC, it later became Sperry UNIVAC and then part of Burroughs, um, but the UNIVAC name still survives, the Sperry name still survives. And uh, the first project was this very large scale database management system called FMS8. That was great. My uh, doctoral thesis was involved with the file system for an operating system that we wrote at CHI called CHI OS. Um, key person behind that was John Langner. 
um, another case alum, and many others were involved. Um, that was great. Uh, the end of my Kai career, we actually did the next generation agent workstation for Lufthansa. Well, immediately Bill Lynch, who was my doctoral advisor, um, I took a programming course from him in Algol 60 as the first programming course I ever took and he, uh, in that course, changed my life uh, and my major. Uh, I had several mathematics professors I liked a great deal. Paul Gunther, who was my model of a Renaissance man. Not only, um, I met my wife here, so that was a, a good thing. And um, I remember working at the computing center, the old Jennings Computing Center, uh, on more than one occasion, uh, quite late at night, where I was living at home and my mother called the police to try to figure out what happened. Uh, this was before cell phones, of course, um, but it was a great place. That Jennings Computing Center uh, produced a number of really good people. It's um, one way that I can try to give back a little bit for all of the things that have really been positive influences in my life, and I like being able to do that. Um, I always look for new things to get involved in. It's part of why I give my time to new companies at the Youngstown Business Incubator. It's part of why I have a startup called Visualized Energy, and it's why I'm working with Lev Gonick in the Case Connection Zone. So to me, it's always the chance to do something new, to push things just a little bit further than they've ever been done before. I graduated from here in 1969 and I stayed around for a few years as a lecturer uh, in actually physically exactly the location we're, we're sitting at now. After a few years I started Hexagram and it was started as a what was called a design and build company. Uh, we would look for companies that needed electronic design services and manufacturing services. And as a result we got to make all kinds of interesting things and that's uh, really how the company got started. I worked for three different departments uh, doing electronics and it was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, environment. Uh, the access to, to those opportunities are really, I think, what led to any success I, I may have had. Uh, even starting as uh, probably even a freshman, uh, I worked in various labs and did all kinds of interesting things. When I came back to teach here about six years ago, the question I always got, what are the students like? Meaning, you know, are they different? And um, when I was an undergraduate, of course, I was competing with students and naturally I found them just, you know, brilliant and, and you know, very, very uh, exciting, interesting people from all over the place. And when I came back, I didn't know what to expect. And I have been very, very impressed. I just can't be more enthusiastic about, about the, uh, the quality of the students, the creativity of the students, the, the work ethic. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Always, I always enjoyed uh, just teaching. And uh, so it was always in the back of my mind. And when then you know, the uh, situation changed and I ultimately sold the company, it was really the perfect thing to do, and I got a tremendous amount of support. Uh, I think I was, uh, you know, uh, um, received uh, well because I had had a lot of diverse uh, industry experience, which I could pass on to the students, and that, that's very, very valuable, especially in this particular field. That is building around ThinkBox. We think that uh, a number of new freshmen came here because of that, which is, you know, certainly. Uh, points to its, uh, the kind of interest that it develops. Uh, 
We were expecting uh, far fewer numbers of students to, uh, to really uh, use the facility. We, we've just been overwhelmed. Because when you're young, you've got time and you've got opportunities, uh, you've got stamina, but you don't have any money and you may not have the knowledge or the experience. When you're, say, middle-aged, uh, you have obligations, you have expenses, uh, but you've got the, the knowledge and the experience and maybe a little more money. So there's probably never a best time, so my suggestion would be to take as much advantage uh, as you can of your education. Uh, for example, in my case, it was summer jobs and internships and, and programs like that. Uh, case can really help you find those, but I think students are obligated to, you know, to dig them up themselves and, and make contacts, uh, and that's, that's what I did. And so, but there are, there's opportunities are out there, and that's your best place to learn, uh, and that's the best place to jumpstart some kind of entrepreneurial activity. So I would take advantage of what's here, and um, try when you're young. I, I think that's your best chance. Well, for me, the engineering science program was ideal. It uh, gave me a broad perspective on a lot of the science behind engineering. I enjoyed that very much. What very few people anticipated at that time was how pervasive information science and computer science would become over the next few decades. And so I think if the engineering science uh, degree were to be reinstated at this time, it would certainly have to uh, change to include those aspects of uh, what's really a very important part of engineering today. That when I came to Case, I came from a very small high school and had only the most primitive understanding of math and science. Uh, seven years later, I joined the faculty at MIT in the electrical engineering department. You could truly say that those seven years were transformative in terms of my life. Acquire the skills and the confidence to uh, participate in engineering at the very highest level. Uh, and all of that really came from what I learned at Case. First of all, I participated in uh, competitive athletics and that uh, was a very important part of my life. The various coaches and the experience with traveling with the teams and things like that. University being fraternity president for a time and involved with uh, undergraduate um, leadership roles, interacting with the university itself, uh, getting people out of trouble and staying out of trouble myself. I found most engaging were Gustav Kurti, who I had for two semesters in dynamics class and who really set a uncompromising standard for what it meant to know a subject. It made a huge difference in my life was Professor Masarovic, who has been at Case for a very, very long time. And he really gave me uh, the feeling that I could do it too, that my ideas were suitable and that uh, really an important part of doing science is critical thinking. I take a lot of pride in the success that my students have had and they have been gone on to be everything from college presidents and deans and so forth to distinguished scholars at various institutions. But really the friendships that I have maintained or we have maintained over the many, many, many years now I have been enormously satisfied. When my wife and I had young children, she traveled with me rather seldom. And when she took a job here at Harvard, uh, she had more freedom. But now that we're both retired, uh, we can do 
pretty much what we want in terms of travel. Well, everybody likes to be recognized. And uh, given the large number of distinguished alums that Case has, it's a very special honor. When I joined the board, that was really when I reconnected. And I was on the uh, committee of the, the board for technology transfer because that's what I like is technology and we, uh, that gave me a chance to see what was really going on at Case and connect with more of the technical people there. And I've worked for companies ever since and developed a, a lot of products, thousands of products. And uh, I, that's what I like to do. And that's my passion. Uh, so when I heard about ThinkBox, the idea, which I heard about actually going to one of these technology transfer meetings, I thought, this is, the, this is great because this will give students and others a chance to really get in there and, and, and take their dream ideas and make them come to fruition in terms of being able to build a prototype. And I thought, this is fantastic. I wish I'd had something like that when I was there. And I started as a project engineer out of case for Keithley Instruments here in Cleveland. And they were really world renowned for making sensitive instruments that would measure very low currents and very low voltage. Around the world I found out about this uh, CAT scanner for doing the head only in England. And I said, you know what, I could do one of those for the whole body. And a million dollars and nine months later I had one working at the Cleveland Clinic. It was the first whole body. CAT scanner that really worked well and it was the first one on the market and uh, finally J&J &J bought Technicare and they said we want you JB to do a MRI we want to have the first MRI in the world and I bought the magnet for it from uh, a company in England uh, Oxford Instruments for 500,000 and I got this huge magnet and uh, we had a working MRI, whole body MRI, working in about uh, a year. And we had them on the market a year after that. When uh, Mal Mixon, who was hired to head sales for Technicare in these areas of CAT scans and so forth, well, we met in 1973 when I was doing the CAT scan. And, uh, Along the way, Technicare had picked up this company called Invacare, wheelchair company, which J&J, &J, when they bought Technicare, they said, get rid of it. So we managed to buy Invacare along with other investors, and that was in 1979, December. And it was a $19 million a year company, and now we're $2 billion. And we've changed the world in home health care in terms of the equipment that's available. Well, during my uh, uh, time at Case, I did get married. And, uh, and my wife used to uh, wait for me to come out of school. And uh, she would uh, wait in the car. And she said, you know, I noticed that you and all the Case guys come out talking, very solemn looks on your face. And she said, all the reserve people come out laughing like they're having a great time. And I always thought, you know, that was really a funny observation to me. Of course, that's back in the days when we had to, we used slide rolls. We did, I, I, I've got to say I'm very appreciative and, and sort of overwhelmed. Uh, I have been uh, trying to help Case by being on the Board of Trustees and now with, uh, as a contributor and being a co-chairman of the board for this Think Box Committee because I really believe in this and I want to see it through.